Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Kyle Bossman. It is a hot day, and that is why I'm not in my traditional hoodie today. It is, I'm sweating like crazy already. Uh, we have new lights, which are, I admit, uh, dramatic. Uh, they're, I'm sorry, these are not, it's not lighting equipment. These are lamps I took the shades off of. Uh, I mean, we can do shadow puppets now, which is kind of funny. But I don't know. This will probably be gone next episode. But that's where we're at right now. You know, it's a casual show. Uh, casual as it may be, I do want to, before we move into today's episode, acknowledge the last episode, which I felt afterward. I'm not ashamed of it. I, I'm not apologizing for it, but it was definitely mean. It was a mean episode. Um, and I definitely felt that I was pushing a narrative, you know, maybe working too hard to make a story out of something that, uh, isn't there by fact. And so, uh, uh, I want to bounce back this week. I want to do something positive. I want to do something talking about what I like. Basically what I did, I was a, a, a sports radio host last week. I listen to a lot of sports radio. I don't watch a lot of sports. I love sports radio. I, I think I just like to listen to these people talk because they care so much about the sports. They just love them, and they're passionate about it, and, you know, it, 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 it's uh, contagious. You know, it, it rubs off on you, and you get it, you know, you get caught up in everything. I think we basically have the same jobs. You know, they talk about sports, I talk about video games. None of it, none of it is news. <laughs> none of it is actually important things. Uh, and so, yeah, I don't know. I get caught up in that stuff. And so today's episode is not sports radio. We're going to be pleasant this week. We're going to talk about things we like. We're not making a spinning a web. You know, we're just trying to, let's just celebrate good things. And Uncharted 4 is a good thing. I love Uncharted 4. Today I want to talk about my favorite part of Uncharted 4. Not the best part. It's not the best part of Uncharted 4. It's just my favorite. I think this thing stands out as something I love. And that is Chapter 4. And so, before we dig in, before we go too crazy into this... If you've not yet gotten to chapter four, and you do someday intend to, if you can foresee yourself writing a comment, spoilers, you spoiled me, thanks, uh, get out of here, <laughs> go. Uh, I'm, I'm you, I've, I've done the same, there's no hard feelings, we'll see you next episode. But yeah, you should go. If you're sensitive, just go, no problem. Uh, I won't talk about anything after chapter four, but you know, some people even there. You know, it's very early in the game, but uh, you don't want those things ruined, I, not, I get that. So anyway, chapter four. My favorite part of Uncharted 4, for one reason, uh, it could be simplified to this one reason, and it's one word, one word I love and overuse consistently, CONTEXT. CONTEXT! I love context in video games, it's just one of my favorite things. And I use this word so much that I think it's worth at least uh, re-clarifying for the sake of this video. When I say context, Think of Super Mario Brothers. There's a scenario to Super Mario Brothers. You are going through this kingdom, you're off to save the princess, you have a reason through, for going through these levels, these video game levels, and at the end of these levels there are flagpoles that are next to a tiny castle. Every time Mario hits one of these flagpoles, knocks it down, he is conquering one of Bowser's outposts. That's context. And I don't mean to say, no, the new games aren't fun because there's no castles next to the flagpoles. Yeah, they're okay, they're still fun. I'm just saying I like it very much that there is context for the flagpoles in Super Mario Bros. The king of context is Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. One thing I always love to point out about this game is that there are no magical floating platforms. Floating bananas, yep. Floating barrels, yep. Floating coins and balloons, yep, yep. But uh, no floating platforms. Everything Donkey Kong is standing on, everything that is part of this world is a part of this world. And it makes the levels look, they're still fun, right? They're still platforming action. You have to press the A button at the right time. Video games, I get it. However, it makes these worlds real too. Every level, video game level of this video game has a reason to exist. There is a reason for this place to be here. Everything is practical and in my eyes, elevates the video games, the pressing A at the right time, the running and jumping together into just something so beautiful, and it's all because of context, because Donkey Kong Country has context. And so, back to Uncharted 4. Let's talk about Chapter 4. It's called A Normal Life. And, uh, the, man, oh, it's, it starts right there. But anyway, we're in, we're in a, an attic right here. We're looking through... Nathan Drake's memories, and also our memories of the previous games. We recognize these things. This is already effective. I'm loving this. Not really my style anymore. 
So that point right there stands out to me still as it's just so uniquely relatable to see a video game character realize that he has outgrown big belt buckles. Because I mean, in 2006, I guess that made sense. Yeah, your character should have a big belt buckle, fine. He, that doesn't fly anymore. And to see the video game character look back at his belt buckles, context, it just makes him relatable. We get it. He's He's been a real human who's lived through those things. That's crazy. Uh, we have a little section here, you know, where we're using a toy gun. Uh, I, I guess that's like a video game thing. Like, yeah, this is your tutorial. Get comfortable with shooting the gun. But uh, while you're shooting this gun, that's when you get called down for dinner. And you pop open the, the door to the attic. I don't know what this hatch would be called. And you come down this ladder. And the first thing you notice as you come down the ladder are those two towels down there. These bunched up towels. I love that because that is so real. That is such a, a, a fine thing to be the first detail that they want to communicate to you about this house is here, look, just there's that. And you go into this room that's straight ahead. There's more clothes just flopped on the floor. The laundry basket is overflowing with clothes. That's what my laundry basket looks like. And uh, we can look at uh, this photo book. And I love this, this is stupid, but I love that you have to use an analog stick to turn the pages instead of X. But anyway, photos, that's a great way to communicate a history without using dialogue. That's perfect, great. We have to talk about this. Bathrooms. I love bathrooms in video games. If you want your video game world to seem real, the fastest path there, the shortest distance between A and B, just add a bathroom, boom, your world is real if people have bathrooms. <laughs> you gotta have those. Uh, it's just so many video game worlds, it's like, where do these people go to the bathroom? And, like, generally, if we're gonna talk about, like, screenwriting, right? If we're gonna talk about, like, normal writing, if you're writing a book, don't talk about the bathrooms. They don't matter. In this case, yeah, it's a video game. You don't have to go in that bathroom, but when you do, you see, this is just the realest looking bathroom. I wanna, look at the shower knob. Look at that shower knob. Have you ever seen a shower knob like that in a video game? I doubt it. Uh, it's always nice to see your reflection in a video game. I want to go in this closet. It's also a mess. I love how much of a mess this closet is. Look at this magazine tucked in down here. Someone just kicked it in there. That is the same magazine as this one, but it's a different issue. I love that too. Normally, you know, you see like one copy, one issue of the magazine shot out throughout the entire video game you're playing. I, I like that there's two different issues, context, it just, it's all real. You know, Elena's office is down the hallway. We can see what she's been up to, you know, just from artifacts that we pick up off her desk and things that we see. We get different, we get great views of this neighborhood through the windows. We're in New Orleans and you can tell going downstairs. I love this. We get to look at the recycling bin. Look at all these products that seem real. Look at that dog that just showed up. I, oh my gosh. Should we come in? There's music playing. Elena's there. You can go to... Wait, I want to see this bathroom first. Look at this. Look at this bathroom. There's three bathrooms we get to hang out in. I love bathrooms in video games. So... We go back in and you can talk to Elena. She's like, hey, will you, get, will you get the food for me? And you're like, okay. And, uh, you know, you go into the kitchen. And what a kitchen, by the way. Again, this this is just the best realized video game household home I've ever seen in a video game. Yeah, you get to see Donkey Kong's home, which I love, but it's <laughs> he doesn't have a bathroom, you know. And so it just I love this kitchen. I don't know if you have ever seen MTV Cribs viewer. I don't know if that's a thing you're familiar with. That was a show on MTV where celebrities would show you their homes. They would legitimately get to go into a celebrity's home and they would show off all of their stuff. The best part of MTV Cribs, the most essential shot, the one every single episode had to have, was the fridge. You had to see the celebrity's fridge. They would pop it open and show you the kind of food they ate. Like Shaquille O'Neal, that's what's in his fridge. You know, Sean William Scott, cool. I don't know, I don't remember. Kelly Rowland, look at her fridge. And so, I don't know, that's just a weird, you relate to that person suddenly. Suddenly that person is a human. And so for a video game character to pop open a fridge and you just see what's inside of this video game character's fridge, and then you get to arbitrarily pick the drink for the video game character. You could pick a beer, you could pick a soda. It doesn't matter, but it's just an interesting thing. You're like, oh, I want a soda right now. Love that. Anyway, we go pick up the food to take it back to our wife. Uh, but you could also take the food upstairs into the bathrooms if you want to. I don't recommend it, nothing happens. This looks dramatic though. But anyway, you can take this food down to Elena and you have this conversation. And by the way, 
huge credit to whoever is animating these faces. I'm seeing expressions here, look at this. I don't know, just look how the, that smile works out. I don't think I've seen a video game character make that expression ever. Wow. Anyway, through this conversation, this is where we learn what Uncharted 4 is about. Nathan Drake would rather look at this video game concept art than listen to what his wife has to say. And that is because Uncharted 4 is about Nathan Drake's enthusiasm for adventure. And enthusiasm for adventure, I think I might say that phrase a lot too. It's another thing I love about video games. I love when a video game character can exhibit an enthusiasm for adventure. It's what I liked about Rogue Galaxy, uh, just recently playing Ratchet and Clank. I think they've done this for a while, but I always, I just appreciate this. Every time you land on a planet, this plays, boom, let's go. It's the let's go factor. I love every Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Freeze. Every time DK starts a level, pounds his chest, pops in, boom, boom, boom. I'm ready to go, let's go. The human mind is innately attracted to the phrase, let's go. We love that, let's go. Everybody loves hearing let's go, I don't know why. <laughs> it's a contraction of let us go, you know, which like a fancy, let, let us go. Uh, but for some reason it's evolved into this thing that means like it's party time. Be excited, please be excited. Just think of like Super Mario 64. Just Mario, before you start a level, just going, here we go, just that, boom, that makes me so excited. It's kind of like the radio hosts, right? It's kind of like those those sports radio guys, just like they care about the sports so much. Mario cares about this level so much, cares about this adventure so much that it's contagious. You know, you absorb that. You feel more excited to play this video game because the characters are excited to be here. Now, back to chapter four, back to a normal life. This video game chapter is the opposite of Let's Go. You don't get to jump in here. This is somebody's house. This is a normal life, right? Uh, this level, I, I love it so much. It doesn't feel right calling it a level. Let's keep calling it a chapter. This chapter paints how we feel about the rest of the video game. There is running and jumping. It's absolutely coming. There is enthusiasm for adventure. That's coming too. But this colors how we feel about the rest of those things. It, it changes our perspective. It informs us of it, when we are in there. It makes it feel different. When Nathan Drake, again, no spoilers, he's gonna run and jump. When he does decide to do those things, you feel differently about it because of this home, because of the stakes. You know what's what he has to lose because we saw his normal life. We know what he's risking. This just means a lot to me. It means a lot to me to see this house in a AAA video game. Right, this is the most important Sony exclusive of the year. Just to be here in this house for a chapter, it's, to me, mature. Uh, not mature in the sense of like rated M for mature headshots and swearing. It's it's mature in the sense that I see video games moving forward with stuff like this. I see it. I see the platform. I see the, the medium evolving so little by little. This is a big deal to me. I see a lot of people, and especially because of the last episode of the show, a lot of people will say, Kyle, if you love story so much, go watch TV, bro. Go read a book, you idiot. Yeah, like I get that, I do get that because the stories are good there too. I think you, if you feel that way, are discrediting video games and what they are capable of because video games can tell stories too and still have fun and still run and jump, still have everything you love about pressing the A button at the right time, but uh, uh, still at the same time, um, make you feel things. And uh, Uncharted 4 does that and uh, I, I, oof, I like that. I like that very much. That's all I can say. Because yeah, that's, that is everything I wanted to say with this week's episode. But I, I do want to add this, is that I don't think context has to be in every video game. I don't think it makes it every... You can't have a fun video game unless you have worlds that are real. I'm simply saying that's effective with me, with my brain. With the chemicals that slosh around in, in this gooby cluster behind my eyeballs, right? Like, for some reason, those just spark up when I'm in, when, I'm, when there's a lot of context. Not photorealism necessarily, right? Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze does isn't photoreal, but it feels like a world. Every video game level feels like a world. Drake's world feels like a world because he's got this house with dirty clothes on the floor. I love that kind of thing. And it's okay if you don't, is what I mean to say. What I want to say is, I'm not here to be right every week. Again, this is probably in reaction to the last episode. I, I'm simply here to be a, a voice. I know I'm not the only voice you hear. I shouldn't be the only voice who is speaking to you. Uh, I simply want to be one of them. 
and I hope that I've accomplished that this week. That is this week's episode. I want to draw your attention once more to patreon.com slash easy allies before I go, because now I get to say on this episode, there is a super important person who has left Texas. Someone who had a pretty cushy job in Texas, lived in a city where people aren't as cranky and weird as they are in Los Angeles, and he left. He saw Easy Allies as an opportunity to go and make videos about video games again, and he said, I'm out of here, let me go. And I think that's cool, that's Michael Damiani. Best in the biz. That's again, that's like those sports radio hosts, right? They just have a passion, He's just he wants to do it, man, and he's here. Patreon.com slash Easy Allies. Easy Allies are here. Uh, anything else about me or this show? Yes. Actually, this is something I've been meaning to say about this show in particular. I think as you can tell, I don't do a lot for my YouTube presence, right? I don't elaborate very much on this YouTube channel. I don't monetize this or anything. I do very little to make this show a thing. I write one tweet to promote it. And despite that, it has been doing much better than I thought it would do. And not just that, but the response, the comments, just the reaction to the show has been much greater than I ever intended for it to be, right? This is supposed to be a casual, dirty show. Um, and I just wanna say I appreciate that because we're almost doing better than I was at the end of the run at Game Trailers with the final bossman with 500,000 YouTube subscribers. And so I think to me that means that this is because of you and your influence and you spreading it and talking about it and leaving comments and things like that. And so, yeah, I just wanna say I appreciate that very much. Uh, obviously I wanna keep this a small dirty thing, but uh, I, I do appreciate you. I don't wanna pretend like um, none of it matters. You know, it, it does It does in some small way mean something to me. And so uh, thank you for that. But at the same time, let's just let's keep this on the deal, right? Let's just keep this nasty. <laughs> You want to see more shadow puppets? Um, <laughs> if you're on Twitter, you can find me at Kyle Bossman. I will be back again. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Hi again, everyone. So I'm here because I've had a long time to reflect on the previous episode of Bossman at Home. And again, I don't want to apologize for it, but I do feel like it was mean without being constructive. And so, to make up for that, I want to help this week. I want to help you, anyone who's watching, especially you, Shigeru Miyamoto. I want to. I just want to lend my expertise. This is Bossman's Writing Workshop, today on the house. So, what we have here is this character, Cat Monroe. This was a big hang-up for me with uh, Star Fox Zero. Cat Monroe, not Kitty Monroe, this is Cat with two Ts, is a very shallow character. She's flat. All she does is flirt. She looks like this. Uh, that's her entire existence. Just like, hey, boys, let me be a cat lady. The thing is, if you want a character like that, if you insist on it, you totally can do that. Writing will allow it. Uh, all you need is for someone to react to this character. And this is something that I love. If we can go back to Uncharted 4 for a second, one thing I really love about uh, during the just outside of cutscenes, the dialogue outside of cutscenes while you're still playing the game, uh, the reason I love some of the stuff that that's there is you see Nathan Drake reacting to the game. You see him straight manning his own video game. And uh, what I mean by straight manning is, uh, you know, it's the term straight man. It's a comedy term. If you think of like a classic comedy duo like um, Keenan and Kel, or I guess if like more recently it'd be like um, Drake and Josh. If you think of like a, just a comedy duo, you have one goofy one who comes up with the stupid ideas, right? And just total numbskull. And then you have another person, the straight man, who says, come on, man, that's weird, right? Goofy thing, come on, man, that's weird. That just works. That's the straight man. That for some reason is always funny. Jerry, I installed a hot tub in my apartment. Ha 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 ha. Come on, man. That's weird. Ha 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 ha. Bazinga. Ha 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 It just never stops working. For some reason, it's just... It's the combo. So you can have your weird goofball who just doesn't make any sense if you have someone reacting to it. That's what I love about Nathan Drake. Just 
a, a building is collapsing and he says, no, come on, man, that's weird. That is great because it makes us uh, relate to this character more. We're in the game. We know that the video game character also recognizes that these things are weird and that helps us get more invested into this world. That makes the world more real if the people are relating to how weird it is. And so back to Star Fox Zero, back to Cat Monroe. What we have right now is she says something like, that was fun. Let's do it at my place next time. See you later, Foxy boy. Fox McCloud, who she is directly speaking to, does not react. Just... I could kiss you for that. That's stupid. That's what's stupid about it. Just have him react. And so with that understood, I've done some writing for you. I hope that we can maybe patch this into Star Fox Zero if you like it. Um, but yeah, uh, here we go. This is me. Uh, I've written for you. This is the scene in which uh, Cat Monroe is at the bottom of the laser well. Uh, we'll open with some dialogue from Cat. That was fun. Let's do it at my place next time. See you later, Foxy boy. What's wrong with you? I, j I just saved your life. Mm, yeah, I'd like to set aside some time to smush our little animal snouts together. Miss Monroe, please. I find this incredibly inappropriate. I'm the captain of Star Fox. Something wrong, Fox? No, Slippy, everything's fine. Who's this little bulby hunk? The name's Slippy. I'm a member of Star Fox. Slippy, please. Pardon me, boys. I don't mean to interrupt, but I seem to have forgotten which of these buttons makes my spaceship go. Help a lady out. Shut up, cat. I know you didn't forget how to go. I'll help. Slippy. Ow! Dang it. I'm getting shot. Evasive maneuvers. Hey, wait. What? I have a few maneuvers I'd like to try with you two boys, if you know what I mean, in my big round cat bed. Cool! All right, that's it. Slippy, we're leaving. Thrusters on. Rock and roll. Wait. No. Wait. No. Foxy. What? Wait. No. Wait. No. But please. No. Slippy. Wait. What? Wait. What? Wait. Is this an emergency? Yes. Promise. Yes. What? Do you think I'm pretty? No, oh, no. Come on, Fox. Are you hitting on my girlfriend? What if I was, you wuss? I'll kill you! <laughs> Fixed it.